Hello, friends. We are excited to share with you some laughs and gardening info today. But first, we just wanted to let you know where our minds are. This past week, 10 lives have been lost and more families have been shattered by gun violence in our home state of Colorado. When we heard about the murders in Boulder, our first thought was, oh no, not again. And we thought about the victims. Officer Eric Talley, who rushed into danger. And Denny Stong, the 20-year-old King Supers employee who went at the shooter with a knife. And we think of Suzanne Fountain, a beloved member of our Colorado theater community, and too many others. We wish we could lighten the burden of grief of the survivors, families, and loved ones of the victims. And our deepest thanks to the police and other first responders who acted so quickly. Hi, I'm Christy. <laughs> and I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Everybody. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hi, Edith. Hi, Ms. Montour Larson. <laughs> I thought so I would formal. mix that up. I thought I would mix it up a little. You're so formal. I know. I know. Okay. Hey, Christy. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> There's Edith. You should have seen her eyes just pop wide open. What? <laughs> uh, so how much snow is left in your yard? Only The only snow left in my yard is where the shade is always. There's always shade right next to the garage. Uh-huh. So there's just a little patch of it. Yeah, me too. It's yeah. amazing how we had two feet of snow, and then we had a couple inches even uh-huh. this weekend, but it's all melting quick. And we're supposed to get one more snow, and then hopefully we'll be done with it. Yes. Yeah. You know, I always feel this. It can snow as much as it wants in March. Okay, and sure. if it has to snow in April, okay. Yeah. But... It better not snow in May. Then I get mad. We should tell Mother Nature that you have a set of rules about this. That's my rule. This is a rule (laughs) non-negotiable. Absolutely. Hey, Edith, what are we talking about this week? We're talking about uh, what to plant when. Yeah, that was fun to work on. I'm excited to share with that for everybody. Me too. Me too. This is for people who, you know, like to have things planned out on their calendar, Mm -hmm. who... Um, and I, uh, mistakes I've made before, planting the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yep. Learn from our mistakes, folks. Please do. And next week, we're doing planting seed seedlings. It's a yes. little more specific and detailed. Yeah, how to plant. How to actually plant. How do you plant yes. a seed? And mm-hmm. you, if you get, if you grow seeds inside and you have those little pots, or you go to the nursery and you have this mm-hmm. little pot, what do you do with this? What are the best practices Absolutely. So how we're going to get how can all you have success. Yeah, and this is we're going to get all this info out there. So if you're anywhere near our zone, you're going to be so ready to plant when the mm-hmm. time comes. So so ready. Uh, so this episode drops on Tuesday, March thirtieth, Edith. Uh huh. And do you know what is special about that date? What? A year ago, you came to my backyard in the midst of all the craziness of the pandemic. Yeah. And. We broached the idea about what we were going to do with our lives now that all the theaters were closed. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I said, "Hey, well, do you think it'd be fun to do a gardening podcast?" Okay. And I said yes, but I have to tell you something, Christy. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought to myself, seriously, "Oh, that's crazy! I barely know how to use a smartphone, and I'm going to make a podcast." That's what I thought to myself. So you were being Minnesota nice. I was being Minnesota nice, which you have taught me to do. Ah. So I keep trying to do that and be supportive, although it was a bit of a white lie at the time. Well, it was the germ of an idea because usually that's what we would do, folks, is that Edith would come over and we would have a cup of coffee and we would laugh and we would tell stories about our gardens. Yeah. And we thought, well, what would just happen if we put a microphone in front of us and shared it with people? Yep, and we've been gardening for decades, between the two of us, mm-hmm. a really long time. So turns out, I, I knew more than I thought I knew, mm. and I have learned a lot from you. And I have learned a lot from you. And from our listeners that oh write us Oh my gosh, stuff. yes. What yeah. are you, 
Isn't that amazing? So this has worked out just absolutely beautifully. Yeah, who would have thought, huh? Not me, obviously. Yeah, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not you. Yeah. And I have some other good news for you, Edith, because you know how we've been talking, we get excited about how many states in the United States people have listened to us and how many countries there are? Yes. And there was one state that we didn't have any listeners Nebraska, from. the Cornhuskers, uh-huh. I am pleased to announce that we now have listeners in all 50 states. Nebraska, we wow. got a listener. Maybe it was someone just driving through Nebraska as fast as they can because it's so boring there. Oh, no, <laughs> you just insulted our one Nebraska listener. Oh, my gosh, listener. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, no, don't. Nebraska listener, don't listen to her. But listen, we what's their you? marketing campaign? It's not for everyone, which I love. I love, love. that, too. That marketing campaign. And you know, guys, I was only teasing. We know. I've, I've been all over Nebraska, and I actually really like it. Hey, if you are the Nebraska listener, will you write into us? Yeah. And we want to know who you are, and we want to know what's going on in your garden. Yeah. Like, are you from Omaha or Lincoln, or are you rural? Right. North Platte. And you know me. I tease. We both tease. We just tease. I've been in North Platte. Yeah. <laughs> You've been absolved, Edith. You're good. Thank you. And I also wanted to share with you that we got another five-star review on Apple Tunes. This is nice because we're not forcing anyone to do it. And do we know this person? Are you sure we're not forcing? Well, if we don't know them, we can't force them. I don't know if we know this person. Okay. Um, they are C. Mals Malsum. And this is what they say. I am about six episodes in, and I know I'm going back to the beginning and listening to them all. These ladies are grounded and knowledgeable and downright entertaining. Excellent podcast. Nice. So thanks, C. Malsum, for writing about that. We really appreciate that. And I'm sure she didn't mean grounded as a pun, although that probably sprang to <gasps> oh, your mind. Oh, that is good. Although she might have. She might have. She might be a pun or they, lover or like they you. they might have. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we want to thank today one of our... Members of our garden party. Woohoo! Yay! So today we're going to give a shout out to Susan L. Susan, thanks for becoming a member of our garden party. And if you don't know what that is, folks, this is your way to support our podcast by contributing a small monthly amount. Mm -hmm. um, Susan L. is under the deadheader category. So she contributes $10 a month to the podcast. So it helps us keep giving it to everybody for free. We appreciate it so much, Susan. Oh, my Susan. gosh, We yes. really do. It makes such a big difference to us. And um, Susan also gets some fun rewards, like you get a shout-out on the podcast. Yes. And she's going to get an upside-down tulips mug. There you go. They're beautiful mugs. And there's different levels of support all over the place. You can, for as low as $2 a month. It's a curmudgeon. We love the curmudgeons. We really do. Yeah. We, and we won't embarrass you by saying your name on the podcast. Never. You just get to give us two bucks a month and feel Which good is not about in any way embarrassing. That is not what she meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We won't say your name because a curmudgeon doesn't want their name. You right. Know, we do, in our heads said. we call you the Bernie Sanders because he that. started the whole the whole two dollar thing, which we really we love. We love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you want to learn how to become a member of our garden party, you can go to our website or you can just scroll down on your phone in the show notes and you'll see a link on how to join the garden party or how to get some of our merchandise. There you go. We try to make it easy for you because we appreciate you. So Edith, what's yes. going on in your garden? Well, actually some things are going on. Do you know I've started weeding? Yes. Because the weeds. Oh my gosh. It's already. like heaven. It's like butter. Yeah, they're, oh, it's so fun to weed when they're like so yes. easy to come out. So I've been weeding. My garlic and my leek are up. Now, these are not ones I've planted. These are ones that reseed themselves. Oh, I love those. Oh, I love I have a patch of those too that are up. Yeah, and the same patch every year in the same place, mm. right? Oh, the other thing that's up, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I hope it's true. You know the marvel of Four Seasons lettuce that I kept talking about? Yes. I think it receded itself again. Get out. I, th I hope it's not a weed, but I think that's what it is. I will let you know next week. Try and nibble on it and see if it tastes good or not. It's, <laughs> it's so tiny oh. you can barely see it, you know. Um, I also have planted some little seedlings. Mm -hmm. uh, a Mishihili, uh cabbage, which is a Chinese cabbage. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Oh, it, it looks beautiful. And, and, and also the Copenhagen Market, which last you can store for up to six months now are these seedlings that you planted inside i planted them inside correct 
Uh, I, during the day, if it's warm, I take him on the porch. And folks, it has not been warm at all. However, they're up. I have, I see the seedlings. That's great. And the leak, this happened today. So I was on the porch and I looked and I had no leak. Went in the house, did some work, came back out and the leak was up. Isn't that amazing? I felt like Disney taking a, a like a slow-mo photo, uh-huh. you know? So that was really, really exciting. Um, what else did I do? I planted red sails, lettuce, three, three kinds of kale and basil. Boy, your All- salad bowl is ready. It is ready. All in the house. You don't need uh, grow lights. You don't even need a southern exposure window, apparently. I thank you for the success of it because you told me, don't use potting soil. Use seed starting soil. Something light. That's what I did. And I, Christy, they came up so fast. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So thank you for that bit of info. Oh, that's excellent. So that's my garden week. Well... I have felt like that garden sign that that says born to garden, forced to work. That's a great, yeah. We had yeah. that in our newsletter yeah. a couple of weeks ago under funny garden signs. And I've just felt like I wanted to get out, but so busy. And every time I had a window to do it, it was snowing. Yeah. And every single time the sun peeked out, I had commitments to do. And today was one of those days, but I... Really wanted to get out because I knew it was going to be nice today and I knew it was going to rain tomorrow. And I didn't want to get out there with a lot of other stuff to do. I don't think I really would have enjoyed it. So I got Uh a lot of work done and I went out and found some of those wonderful spring miracles. Like, what do you mean? Well, first of all, do you remember how I said that I had some crocus coming up? Yes. Then I went to another part of my yard and I went, wait a minute. Where's all this crocus from? I forgot I planted like 20 crocus bulbs. Oh. And they're all coming up. That must be so beautiful. Do you ever do that, plant something and you forget about it? All the time. (laughs) So I forgot Literally all the time. And then I had some, last year I had some pink daylilies, which are unique because most daylilies will be red or orange or yellow or some variation of that. And I had them in the front and I moved them into the back and I just kind of threw them back there and just kind of see, we'll see what they would do because they weren't happy out front. And I put them with the other daylilies thinking, well, they just might need to be by their buddies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're coming up. And next week we'll explain that she didn't actually throw the bulbs into the ground. She planted them. Yes, I planted them. And next week we'll explain more (laughs) about that. (laughs) You're welcome. And I'll tell you this, Edith. Yes. I was out looking at my winter sewing jugs, yeah. seeing who needed to be watered, and I watered a couple of them, and then all of a sudden my eye just caught something. No. this Is something up? My pansies oh. and my black-eyed Susan, also known as Rubeckia. Tiny, teeny, weeny little seedlings have wow. come up. And folks, these are seeds that I sow, I, I sow outside in the winter. Check out episode 25, take out your jugs, and learn mm-hmm. how to winter sow. Mm-hmm. So those are the first two that come up. So now that they've started to come up, I got to keep an eye on the temperature just to make sure that um, oh. they won't get too chilly. Because now that they're up, you have to keep them a little bit yeah. warmer. Probably that not makes... the pansies because as we'll talk about in a little bit, pansies are yeah. a hardy annual, so they'll be okay. But that's kind of that's kind of exciting. And then um, I also started um, a war in my garden. A war? Yes. Do you ever have any wars, any battles in your garden? With weeds, you mean? Yes, and a certain kind of weed. Weeds and squirrels, Uh uh-huh. Yes. This war is with quack grass. Oh, that's a bad one. Oh, yeah. But because this time of year where the ground is so soft. You're winning. I am pulling up quack grass that, folks, this quack grass is a perennial weed that spreads underground. And so when you pull up a root, I was pulling up roots that were two feet long. So satisfying. And so when you get the wonderful. whole thing and the whole thing releases, uh-huh. not all of them, because they have a tendency to want to cluster in other plants that, like, they love to get into the chives. Yep. It's yep. hard to tell. They, Interesting. They're sneaky, those, that quack grass. That's my, my war. So I was, I was up on that. And then I did a lot of work on my cleaning out iris. So we talked about this uh, two weeks ago about mm-hmm. spring cleanup. Yeah. And it's a great time to clean up iris right now because you can really see what they look like. 
You can really check out the tubers. And so if any of the tubers are mushy or wrinkly, you can oh, cut those away. Oh, right. Uh, but be careful as you walk around. I noticed this today, especially because I'm still recovering from my sprained ankle and I'm trying not to step on things. And um, I stepped on a couple plants and then it went kind of, you know, mm -hmm. but I have a lot of iris. And so I suppose I can lose a couple blooms. So be careful where you step, but it's really good to clean out your iris. It's a great time to do it in early spring um, and, and check them out and clean them all up. So Christy, it was a busy time. I am doing that this weekend, I swear. This weekend I'm doing that. It's going to actually warm up a little bit and I don't have anything else that I have to do. Oh, great. And if you see any iris, Edith, that have a big hole in the middle, yeah. then you know it's a good time to, you know, you're, they're ready to be divided. A hole in the middle of the tuber or a hole in the middle of the set of plants? The latter. A hole in the middle of the set of plants. So if it looks like a big ring of tulips with an yeah. empty hole in the middle, yeah. it means that they want to be divided. Not until July or August, but okay. just keep an eye. You think, oh, those are ready. And now is the time when you can really see it. Because once all the leaves are up and the flowers are up, it's hard to really see uh -huh. what's happening in the tuber. So now you can have the room and the space to see them. That's a really good tip, Christy. Thank you. All right, folks. If you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with, or you want a good laugh, you should check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. You can... Click on the link in our show notes. <laughs> if you want to see <laughs> pictures of our gardens, inspirations, gardening jokes, etc., visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Oh, we also have blogs and a YouTube channel. And you can also, while you're on our website, you can sign up for our newsletter for jokes, funny garden signs, all that kind of business. We would love you to do that. Stay tuned for more of The Suburbanites, brought to you by Cigarettes. June, are you in there? June! June, it's me, Madge. Hi, Madge. Sorry, I was in the garden. How are you? I'm good. But you, how are you, June? I'm great. Really? Yes. <laughs> Sit down, June. We have to talk. What's wrong? June, your couch doilies are crumpled and your credenza is dusty. It's springtime in the garden and there's so much to do. I guess I've let my housekeeping go a little. You're the talk of the neighborhood, June. <sighs> in a good way? Of course not. It's no fun to gossip if it's good. <laughs> what are people saying? That you've always got hand pruners in your back pocket and your hindquarters out to the front yard. June, no lady acts like that. What about your femininity? Here's what happened to my femininity, Madge. Tune in next time to The Suburbanites, brought to you by Cigarettes and Cigars. Okay, so many plants, mm -hmm. so many flowers, so many vegetables. When do you plant them? Now, please remember that we're in Colorado. We don't know where you are. It all hinges on your last frost date. Because if if you plant too soon, the frost will kill them. Mm, mm -hmm. And they will be puny because it's too cold, <laughs> you know? And if you don't know when your last frost date is, just look in the show notes. We have a link on how you can find it. Ours is on or around May 7th, though it seems like every year it's getting a little earlier. Mm -hmm, it sure does. And we're zone 5B. And if you don't know where your zone is, you can find that also in our show notes. But it just says what part of the country you're in. Um, if you are ever in the nursery, they'll always always say what zones are good for. Um, uh, I wish also, I was zone 7 sometimes. Yeah. Zone seven's a good zone. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> also, read the back of your seed packets. It's like a little encyclopedia for you. The one difference, I think, the one thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration in Denver is that we are a mile high. Mm. So we, I believe, I plant earlier than people say I should because our, the sun is so much warmer. It really is so much That's warmer. That's a good point. And I can, we can also just add on that as we give up, these are just kind of general guidelines. Uh -huh. But let's be honest, part of the fun of this is experimenting through trial mm -hmm. and error. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I bought a frost blanket 
So if I if I hear that a frost is coming and I mm-hmm. plant it early, I'll just get out there and I'll cover it with my frost blanket or yeah. one of my many blankets in general. Yeah. So we'll tell you some general guidelines about what to plant when. So this show drops on March 30th, which means in a couple of days it'll be April. Mm-hmm. So Edith. Yes. Vegetables in April. Okay. So, what should people plant? Well, some of us have already planted peas, but I like mm-hmm. succession planting because I don't like bringing everything to to come to, what do you call it, harvest at once. It's a lot of work then. That's so much work. So in April, I will plant peas. I will also plant the uh, root vegetables, mm. beets, onions, carrots, parsnips. For some reason, I have really great, great luck with parsnips. I love parsnips. I do too, and I've never grown them. I can give you some seeds. They're so easy. Christy, they're really easy to grow. Okay. I might need little parsnips like the little finger carrots because I have trouble growing big carrots, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I always I always buy, I like Danvers half long. Oh, that's what I should yeah. do. You can get a Danvers half long. Yeah, I love parsnips. If you, if you have clay soil like we do here and it gets bunched up, it's hard not to break off the carrots. Mm -hmm. So depending on where you are, you might want to think to yourself, well, I'm just going to grow a lot of smaller carrots rather than huge ones. Oh, that's great. Uh, Swiss chard, which I'm going to grow for the first time because of one of our listeners. Yes. And she gave us a good recipe for that too. We were, we were poo-pooing Swiss chard. Yes, we were. Now I'm ashamed of that. I'll say that, but. Oh, the shame. Yeah. (laughs) The shame. (laughs) Um. A lot of herbs can go out. Now, I have mostly perennial herbs. Basil, I think it's too early for basil. I think it's too early for basil. That's a really... Basil gets cold. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Other things to plant at this time, they they should be able to take a little bit of the cold. They should kind of like it. Cabbage, for example. As soon Mm. as my things get big enough, Uh my seedlings, right? Um, uh, What else? Maybe celery, chives come back every year. I will probably try cucumbers in April. In April. I will try. Wow. If they die. That seems early to me. It, it is early, but I love cucumbers so much. And if they die? And if they die, I have more, I have more seeds. The garden will forgive you. It, and it will forgive me. <laughs> and folks, if you collect your own seeds, then you know one cucumber can give you practically like a hundred seeds. Yes. There's no reason <laughs> to save Oh you my gosh, know. I only have three seeds left. We don't have to do that. That's a really good point. Radishes. Yes. I keep planting radishes, and I've started in March, or would have if it hadn't been snowing so much, but I will definitely, it's one of the first things that I plant. I love radishes so much. Um, so those are the things that I plant in April. Okay, well, I for believe. flowers, now is the time in April to plant cold, hardy annuals. So these are annuals that don't mind a little chill. Pansies, mm-hmm. calendula, African daisy, dianthus, snapdragons, sweet asylum, and for our friend John out there, who I know is listening, sunflowers. He always plant. He always waits till after Mother's Day to plant his sunflowers. I do and- too. So you plant them before? Yeah. Okay. April. In fact, mine will start. Mine will start self. The self-sown ones yeah. from last year will start popping up in a couple weeks, I bet. Oh, okay. Nice. Maybe All not right. April 1st, but maybe April 15th I would do it. And then you could also still plant bare root perennials. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't touch your roses. Don't touch your roses. You told, Yeah, I'm yeah, not touching roses. my roses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about May? What do you plant in May? In May. Now, in May, depending on how warm it is, usually it gets pretty dang warm. That's when I will break out... The basil, toward mm-hmm. the end of May, it'll be the stuff that really likes the heat, like yeah. bell peppers, uh, tomatoes. Yes, tomatoes. We're all just wanting, oh, may you I You really have to wait until your nighttime temperatures are in the upper 40s for tomatoes. Nighttime upper 40s for tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really, really don't That's like That's usually around cold. May, around Mother's Day. Yeah. Uh, this year, I'm going to plant corn in May. I haven't yeah. planted corn in many, many years. I haven't years. planted corn in years. It was um, such a very uh, uh, time-wasting space for to give squirrels some food. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> going to try it again. What Gosh darn it, I'm not going to let them stop me. Yeah. Um, what about uh, green beans? 
Yes. Love the heat. You Green beans at that time. Those are great in succession also. Yeah, they are because they grow so fast. That's a perfect thing to let your kids grow are green beans because they grow really, really fast and they have the most beautiful little blossom. Yes. And then, you know, again, if it's warm enough, the summer squash come in like the zucchini. Yes, I'll plant all that in May. And the winter squash as well, actually. Yeah, I will too. Mm-hmm. So that's that's May. And, and when it comes to flowers, now you can start planting um, half-hardy annuals like cosmos, fuchsia, okay. uh-huh. nasturtium, petunias, geraniums. That's really good in May. Um, you know, everything is really starts to happen around Mother's Day in, in many climate zones because it really signifies late spring or when the night and morning frosts are almost, if not completely gone yeah. for the season. Um Early May is a great time to trim your woody perennials, uh huh, like lavender, thyme, and that's usually when I will prune back my roses. Um, it's also great to just start planting perennials at whim. Will you remind me about early May and my uh, roses? Yeah, I will. Yeah, will you remind me of that. Okay. Um, it's also it's a great time to put out your Easter lily. So if you've got an Easter lily. Keep it in your house, mm-hmm. and then wait until the last. Wait until your last frost date, which yeah. is usually around. For a lot of the countries, it's around Mother's Day. I've done that, and it really works. I did that last year for the first time. Someone gave me an Easter lily and um, planted it, and it came. It was great. Oh, that's wonderful! Yeah, yeah, I love lilies. I do too. Previously on the Suburbanites. What about your femininity? Here's what happened to my femininity, Madge. We now return to the Suburbanites. When Fred started spending all his time in the garden, you suggested I entice him back into the house. Like a good wife should do, yes. So, I put on my low-scoop neck dress and high heels and out to the garden I went. Hmm. And my high heels sank into the garden soil. That must have been unseemly. It would have been, had Fred not been so delighted. He thanked me for aerating the soil. Now I've heard everything. No, you haven't, because then Fred gave me a strawberry that he grew. Madge, it was amazing. You ate it right then and there? What if it had bugs on it? There was a little slug, but I just shook it off. (gasps) Ew, June! It's 1961. We have frozen TV dinners, tang orange drink, and onion soup mix. And you're eating out of the dirt? Sharing your food with slugs? Yes, Madge, I am. I'm a gardener now, and I love it. Hmm. Will I see you at the League of Suburban Women meeting Wednesday? Oh, I'm sorry, no. We're weeding on Wednesday. Got to stay on top of it. And my Tupperware party Thursday? We're planting our seedlings Thursday. Oh, June. And when Fred gets tired of the garden, he'll also get tired of you. And look for someone with clean fingernails and who isn't dressed in overalls. I don't think he will. But if he does, Madge, I'll still have the garden. So all is not lost. I gotta get back out there now. We're mulching. Mulching? What the heck is that? I don't know what the world is coming to. Next thing you know, women won't wear curlers to bed, and they'll stop wearing pearls with tight sweaters to please their men. Tune in next time to The Suburbanites, brought to you by cigarettes, cigars, and pipe tobacco. June is busting out all over. (laughs) June is also the time where if I've killed anything in May, I'm hoping that there's still time to plant it in June. Yeah. You know, like my cucumbers, for example. I think sometimes people think gardening is so precious. We kill a lot of things. We do. (laughs) It's okay to kill stuff. It's okay.
Yeah, because you don't do it on purpose. It's not like we do it on purpose, but these things happen. And that's how you learn. You learn the next time. Yeah. Yeah. So June, like, um, cantaloupes. Here, it's so hot here now in May that, um, really I use June as my, okay, I remember, I know one thing that I do in June. There's a spinach that loves the heat, which if you garden, you know that doesn't happen. Yeah, don't plant spinach in June because it'll just... Unless you get bolt. a variety. What? Specific, yes, I have it. I'll give you some. There's two varieties. One is called Malaga, Malagar that I planted one year. It grows in a vine and it's very... It's, um, what's the word? Like mu- not mucusy. That sounds that, delicious. That, <laughs> <laughs> Viscous. I don't... <laughs> the word right now but it's flaginous i'm gonna do another frizzable (laughs) okay ignore we're gonna ignore that spinach pretend i never said anything there's another spinach that i'm gonna try this year it's called the new zealand spinach now oh i remember you talked about that new zealand's always warm so they have somehow they got a hybrid that won't bolt hopefully in the heat and I'm going to try planting that in June and what we mean by bolt is it'll mean that the the plant will start to flower and and once it starts to flower the leaves will turn bitter they get bitter they stop growing because all Mm -hmm. the energy goes into Mm -hmm. making seeds yeah well when it comes to flowers June is when I plant zinnias Uh uh-huh and I plant it by seed I direct sow them right into the ground they get they'll get chilly and I love zinnias I I, I save seed, I buy seed, I plant Remember zinnias you, everywhere. Remember, you, you were going to, I'll do you a trade. I save those I will seeds, give you New Zealand zinnias. spinach mm-hmm. seeds. You give me some zinnia seeds. Yeah. Okay, good. I saved them for you. Nice. Also, a great time to plant marigolds. Okay, okay, good. They love the heat. And mine will start, I get nervous, like, oh my gosh, none of my marigold seeds reseeded, and what am I going to do? But boy... Uh-huh. Just be patient. Wait for the warmth to come in, and the marigolds will start to come in. You'll have more than you know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And if you would like to plant them around your tomatoes, that's a good, not only is it also pretty, great. it's really pretty, and, you know, it keeps some of the bugs away, supposedly. Yes. Yes. The, it, the not nema, because it has not nematodes. The not, that, the infamous not nematode. K-N-O-T yeah, nematodes. Business. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you get the French marigolds. The French. Also... In June, plant your impatience. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And salvia is great to plant in June, which is a very pretty plant. And, of course, go ahead and plant perennials. Just keep an eye on them, depending upon where you live. It's May is a great, really great time to plant perennials. June, you have to be a little more careful because of the heat. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you plant, if it's warm, really warm where you are, make sure you plant them in the morning or in the evening Mm -hmm. and keep an eye on them for water. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because when it's boiling like that, um, they need more care. Mm -hmm. Now, can you plant in July? I don't know. Can you? I do. What do you plant? Oh, when it comes to veggies, I'll do more rounds of... (gasps) Rounds, succession, beans. You can plant beans like... Almost all the way through. I like to do succession green beans all summer long. Onions. Mm -hmm. You can do succession with onions all the time. Cucumbers, if it's not too hot. That's right. Cucumbers. As long as they have enough time, you look at the back of the seed packet, it takes this long for it to harvest. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 58 days for uh, cucumbers. So yeah, why couldn't you do it in July? Is that we're in the month yeah. of July now? Aren't yeah. We? Okay. Yeah, and the and the big thing when it comes to flowers is about dividing your iris. It's a great time to do that um, in July. Maybe not so much planting as there is deadheading, giving your your annuals and a good mm-hmm. deadheading. Uh, you'll get a second flush in mm-hmm. August and September. Yes. Um, you could also dig up and divide your tulips in July oh. and move them. Okay. Um, you know what else happens in July? Your corn is as high as an elephant's <laughs> eye. <laughs> That's so true. I love how we're bringing in all these Rodgers and Hammerstein songs. Yeah. This section. 
If at all possible, folks, in July, do not dig up and divide perennials. Too es- hot. Too hot, especially too, too hot. if they're in bloom. They will literally, if you try to do that, they will literally just droop yeah. in your hands. There are some wonderful heat-tolerant annuals or perennial plants you may find in your nursery this time of year that you might get um, success in if you want to plant them, like pent salmon or certain begonias, stone crop, which is a succulent, vinca, which is a vine, um, lantana, which is that little orange flower, Mm -hmm. blanket flower. Uh, You can still plant zinnias. If you see zinnias in in the nursery, yeah. Uh, you could plant those in July. They like the heat. You know, sometimes in nursery, at, at, when it comes to July, they've just got some really sad looking things left. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes they'll like almost just give them to you. So I find myself planting odd things just because they were there and they're like, take it, it's a dime yeah. or something like I've that. I've negotiated down things. Especially, oh, have you? Yeah. It's, even in the box stores, it's amazing how sometimes they'll just yeah. say, really? And they'll say, yeah. One time, (laughs) one time at a big box store, I saw a garbage can full of little seedlings. And I said, can I try to take them home? And they go, yeah, sure. (laughs) Well, they're so busy working about other things, about paint and lumber. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. They're not putting all the attention that we would give them. So I was, yeah, I was really glad when they let me do that. Um, What about in August? Oh, boy. August, all I can really think of is green beans. <laughs> and I just don't like green beans that much. <laughs> you know, last year I did another, I did a, I, I planted spinach and a radishes. Oh, so you were starting your fall planting. I, in August. In August. Yeah. Did it work, Christy? Yeah, it did. did. It? Not only did it work. Oh my gosh, I remember your radishes. It didn't work for me. And I did more carrots too. Carrots is something you can keep planting. We did. We should have said that. Yeah. You can plant carrots all those months. I planted carrots in August, and remember that I harvest them in November. That's right. And we, even we, if we poured warm water on our frozen soil right. to dig the carrots, up. that's right. And even if they're little, that just means they're like candy. That just means yeah. they're as sweet as can be. Yeah. Rather a little one than none at all. Right. right. And that's it's not a baby carrot because as we've already discussed, a baby carrot that you buy in the grocery yeah. store is just a regular carrot that they've ground down. Yeah. <laughs> ground it to the depth and shamed we're talking, it. We're talking real baby carrots. Yeah. Real ones, which are young, mm-hmm. young carrots, which yeah. are unlike anything you've ever tasted. They're great. Well, when it comes to flowers, for me, August is about mums. Months. And you'll find them all over the place. Mm-hmm. Plant them, grow them. You know, I would, if, I, if you're going to divide mums, I divide them in the spring. Okay. In fact, what I do with mums is um, I also give them haircuts all the way until July. When you buy a mum in the grocery store, they've already done this. They've already uh, cut them back and pinched them back so they'll have a, a lot of flowers. Mm-hmm. When you take those mums from the grocery store and then you plant them in the ground, which I hope you folks do, you can either one overwinter your mom or you can plant them in the ground. Yeah. They'll get really leggy and tall. And unless you want to support them, um, they'll flop over. But you can get a lot more flowers if you pinch them back, give them a little haircut, take an inch off of them until and 4th talking, of July. And you're talking about doing, you said do that before, until 4th of July, and then you let them flower. Let them go. Because they like to bloom in the fall, right? Yes. And yeah. you're kind of forcing them to bloom in the fall until you have more flowers and they'll be bushier. Okay. Um, but yeah, moms is a great thing. And then be careful again to, if you're going, if you're thinking about dividing perennials, careful of doing them in August when it's so hot. Mm-hmm. Do it. Um, wait, wait, September, wait until September. Yeah. That's when a, 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 in fact, you can get great deals on perennials. Yep. And, um, at nurseries in September. Half buying, price sales put, and the, and, everywhere. And don't forget, and don't do it in the heat of the day. You oh, don't yeah. want to garden a lot in the heat of the day anyway. Yeah. So therefore our summer's all done. Wow. We did it. <laughs> we went through all the months. <laughs> okay. Hopefully we'll get uh, everything planted in and we hope you folks do too. Okay, we're going to get into mailbag. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. But before we do, Edith. What? Would you like to say the word? The word. I thought the minute we, the minute that segment ended, I thought of the word. It's mucilaginous. Beautifully said. It's a real word, folks. It's, (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not yeah. mucus. It's not mucus. It just comes from the same root word. That's all. Okay, on to the mailbag. <laughs> I'm glad we got that sorted. Uh, well, you know, we never got to sort frizzable, which, but that's a whole nother story. Okay. You know what, Christy? What, Edith? We have a letter here <laughs> that we got some months ago that we haven't read yet, but this is the perfect time. Mm. This is the time to read it, I think. Um, this is from our listener and friend, Doug from Tennessee. Hi, Doug. Hello, Doug. Here he goes. I've been thinking about the current state of seemingly permanent social unrest and mutual antipathy between major social and philosophical groups in this country. He graduated high school, folks. And it seems to me <laughs> that the provision of many of the goods and services that we take for granted in modern life are going to be at risk in the future. I think this should be an impetus for people to start or to expand their growing of their own food greatly, not just gardening, but if possible, the keeping of chickens, rabbits, etc. And not just for hoarding for themselves, but for the maintenance of both themselves and their neighbors. Encouraging a sort of neighborhood vegetable co-op and perhaps even regular block parties intended primarily for the distribution and healthy consumption of backyard produce would be a good way to mitigate the potential problem while fostering friendship with those we share our towns with and allowing those with specific skills and knowledge, canning, food drying, etc., to teach those skills to others. Wins all around. You know, what I love about that letter is that it states how gardening brings people together. Yeah. From all different walks of life, different types of beliefs, doesn't matter where you are or who you are, mm -hmm. we can find a way to understand each other. Mm -hmm. And when we understand each other, perhaps maybe some of the walls that are there can come down. Absolutely. Meet over the garden. You know, my, my next door neighbor, Stephanie, who I've talked about because she helped me with my squirrel issue in the house. Mm -hmm. She and her husband, Mark, they have instigated a couple of block parties. They're fantastic. People living four houses down that we never knew, that were there for years, never met them. They were, this is such a great idea, Doug from Tennessee. Thank you so much, Doug. And folks, we love hearing from you. We want to hear your garden stories, your questions, your flops, your failures. Uh, what are you planting in April? Will you write to us? You might have gardening questions, or maybe you could answer some of our questions. Just get in touch, because we love hearing from you. Especially if you're from Nebraska. Yeah, don't forget, Mr. or Mrs. Nebraska person, to <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail, or at UpsideDownTulips.com. That's our website. Or clink in the, clink in the show notes. I mean, clink, clink, clink. 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 <laughs> and now it's time for your inspiration of the week. Our inspiration this week comes from Phyllis Thoreau, a writer. I think this is what hooks one to gardening. It is the closest one can come to being present at creation. I huh? love it. Isn't that good? She obviously never had children. <laughs> point. I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening today. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of Upside Down Tulips, could you do us a favor? Please do. Go to your phone, click on that share button, and share the show on social or with a friend who might also appreciate it. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. Want to hear more of Denise's music, it's, which is incredible, by the way? Go to denisegentilini.com or find that link on our website. And a special thanks to our extremely talented and very kind friend, David Sloan. Join us next week for our tips and tricks on how to plant seeds and seedlings. There you go. Hey, don't forget. If you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down.